Aloha everybody, this is Olivia Trice from the Hawaii International Film Festival Online Creators and Critic Immersive Program, and you're listening to The HIF Podcast. I was really excited to hear that HIF was going to come back this year for in-person screenings and at the Consolidated Theaters in Kahala. There's just something so welcoming, warm, nostalgic, all of the above about going to a movie theater and sitting with popcorn and kicking your feet up. And although I personally didn't get bamboozled by the inflation and concession stand prices, I think that these in-person selections were so diverse, so captivating, and I think what really tied them all together was the humanistic aspects. I don't think I saw a film that had characters that were boring uh, or two-dimensional. I felt a lot of empathetic responses come up after seeing a lot of the films, whether they were fiction or documentary. And I was especially drawn to some of those that had strong female leads. In a society where a woman's choice is questioned and challenged and often revoked, I think it's something very powerful about writing female characters who have choices to make and have to make some really hard decisions. And I think a film that exemplified that the most was Woman Talking. Woman Talking premiered this year and it was written and directed by Sarah Pauly. The film takes place in 2010 in an isolated religious community where women have to grapple with the horrific fact that the men in this community have been raping them in their sleep. Mothers, elders, and daughters alike have to come together to reconcile with this horrible reality that their community is one, not safe, and the men are not to be trusted. In a very pragmatic manner, a chosen group of women have to decide if they are going to do one of three things. One, stay and do nothing. Two, stay and fight, or three, leave the community. And leave is more than just a physical exit. It's framed as well as leaving one frame of mind and entering another. And I think a lot of the internal conflicts with these decisions really inform that because these women are taught to be loyal to these men and loyal to their family, loyal to their community, and more importantly, to God. And so them taking back their power and making this choice goes against how they have been raised. I mean, these women don't even know how to read or write, but with anger comes awareness. And I think a big distinction between staying and fighting versus staying and doing nothing is the matter of forgiveness. And how does one forgive what is difficult to accept? And so what I think the biggest internal conflict and controversial decision in this story is the decision to be loyal to themselves to be loyal to their daughters, to be loyal to their sons who are not yet old enough to be influenced by this toxic male culture that can even be prevalent in this remote community. I think their choice speaks volumes about how they view themselves and their dynamic in the society, but as well as how they view the world and the next generation that they are raising. As cut off from society as these women are, they still know that they deserve basic human rights of safety and justice and to live in harmony amongst one another. And I think this process of rage and dissonance is really a fuel to move forward because although they are still 
coming to terms with what's happened to them, they know that they have to make a decision and time is of the essence. And so it really becomes a matter of choosing pacifism versus complacency versus retaliation. And I think it's really honorable how Sarah Polly writes each of these characters representing emotions uh, that are remnant of the stages of grief, of anger and denial and bargaining. And it's truly a privilege to be able to watch these characters process their emotions, actualize their faith while leading an example for the younger girls. And knowing that their morality is rooted in their faith is what binds them and influences them to make the final decision that their relationship with God is equal to that relationship with themselves and supersedes the relationship with those men and the society and rules in which they created in order to keep the women uneducated and in service to them. By the end of the movie, I had tears running down my eyes because I think I, like so many others, can relate to a breaking point where you have to decide enough is enough. And knowing that that choice was going to echo and affect their children made the stakes even higher. It really put forgiveness into perspective for me because just because you forgive someone doesn't mean that you forget what they've done to you it doesn't mean that you allow them to treat you that way again and it doesn't mean that you have to stay while we're on the topic of forgiveness i'd like to share a quote by lewis b smeets he writes that to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that that prisoner was you. I don't mean to get all deep on you, but I think this is such a powerful statement and is reflected in another film that I saw at HIV called Our Father the Devil. To contrast women talking, Our Father the Devil is written and directed by Cameroonian filmmaker Ellie Fombi. Our Father the Devil centers around our main character, Marie, who we see grapple with resentment and an inability to make peace with her past. Although Marie's life is usually peaceful as a caretaker in a small quaint town in France, that peace is disrupted by a figure from her past that forces her to face her trauma. This film follows Marie on a windy path that echoes the pain that she experienced as a child. She takes out her anger on this man who victimized her and her family. And we also see how it affects her as an adult and forces her into an isolation of anger and disillusionment. It makes her unable to enjoy some of the greatest pleasures of life. I really feel for Marie. There's a scene in the kitchen where we see Marie and Father Patrick engage for the first time. Ellie does an amazing job blocking this scene and these characters so that we can feel the tension of their dynamic from the perspective of both Marie and Father Patrick. Both the blocking and the tone of the film really plays up the tension that occurs when un you're unable to forgive someone, when you're unable to let something go. And if that's not relatable, I don't know what is. So when reflecting on the choices I mentioned earlier, drawn from women talking, of choosing to stay and forgive, to stay and fight, or to leave, it brings me to my favorite film that I saw at this year's film festival, All the Beauty and Bloodshed. All the Beauty and Bloodshed is a phenomenal documentary 
directed by Laura Poitras that paints a raw cinematic portrait of photographer Nan Golden and her experience living through the AIDS crisis in the 80s and now as a survivor of the opioid crisis and a leader of an activist group called PAIN, which stands for Prescription Addiction Intervention Now. This group founded by Nan and her colleagues is a direct response to the opioid crisis and a demand for the government and other institutions to hold the Sackler family accountable for manufacturing this overdose crisis. This story is told through many of the iconic slideshows by Nan, intimate interviews with her and other victims of the opioid crisis, as well as photography and rare footage from Nan's own personal archives. This is a prime example of standing your ground and fighting. It's not that one of these choices is better than the other, but it's how you come to these decisions and what greater good it's serving. Left enamored and inspired by Nan and her group's ability to take all of that pain and turn it into power in action. You can learn more about All the Beauty and Bloodshed by reading my film review that's up on the HIF blog now. I, wherever in the world you may be, I sincerely hope that this podcast inspires you to take action in your own life, whether it is finally making that hard decision, choosing to forgive someone, or just taking a stand for what you believe in. Once again, my name is Olivia, and it's been an honor taking part in the 42nd Annual Hawaii International Film Festival. If you like what you hear and you want to see more, feel free to find me on socials at Olivia on Instagram. Mahalo for listening, and I hope to see you on our credit page soon.